Hello everybody, this is Travis with Titans at CNC, and today we're gonna go ahead and discuss probably the most important item that you can find in your inspection department. In fact, if you don't have a good set of these, chances are you're setting yourself up for a very costly mistake. What item is it? Well, if you haven't guessed, it's the mighty, mighty gauge block. Small, simple, unassuming, and absolutely vital to your success in manufacturing. Now, gauge blocks were invented by C.E. Johansson at the end of the 19th century when he was involved with rifle production in Sweden. He had found that many of the parts that were made use limit gauges that were designed specifically for that part. Now the problem is, is if you had a rev change or a new model came out, that limit gauge would be no good and you would have to create a new limit gauge. So C.E. Johansson thought that he could create a small interchangeable set of gauge blocks that would allow you to create thousands of different limit gauges more quickly, more efficiently, and with a much smaller supply of material. So what is a gauge block? Well, gauge blocks are a fixed measurement length, they are composed of one extremely shiny, extremely flat surface, and another extremely shiny, extremely flat surface that is parallel with the other side. This also has another feature. It has a hole in the center right there that allows you to use a rod to put together very large stacks of gauge blocks. Now, in addition to different sizes, gauge blocks come in different shapes. The standard that you'll see more often than not is actually this right here, which is the rectangular gauge block. And this was the original gauge block created by Johansson. Now, in addition to the different shapes, gauge blocks come in different materials. What you guys have probably seen the most of is the steel gauge block. These are the most cost-effective way of having a good solid set of measurement reference standards in your machine shop or your inspection lab. Now one thing with the steel gauge blocks you're going to want to wear gloves because these will rust and you don't want to transfer oil or other contaminants to the block. Now in addition to steel there are ceramic gauge blocks in which you don't have to wear gloves to handle because the ceramic blocks do not corrode and rust like the steel blocks. In addition to such, ceramic blocks are more wear resistant and they do have a couple other benefits, but again, they are more costly blocks. So it's up to you to decide what's best for you and your needs. Now there's one other type of gauge block that you don't see here and that's the carbide gauge block. These usually come in sets of two and they go on the end of a gauge block stack and they serve as wear blocks to protect the rest of your blocks. So again, like always, what you need depends on you and your specific requirements. All right, so when do you use gauge blocks? Well, they're originally used quite heavily in min-max situations, right? And you still might see that today, although it's not quite as common as it used to be. Sometimes if you have a nice shop grade of gauge blocks, somebody might use them to inspect mechanical features. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that if you have your inspection gauge blocks because it can lead to premature wear of the blocks. Sometimes you might use them to create a stack to make a sign plate and whatnot. Um, but the main reason that we probably use gauge blocks today is for calibration of precision instruments. So you have a pair of calipers on that shop floor or a micrometer that you're using to measure parts every single day. Well, how do we know that that tool is measuring the way it's supposed to? The answer? is gauge blocks, right? These are the reference standard. These are how we know that our instruments, actually not even micrometers and calipers, but this linear height gauge right here, our CMMs all use gauge blocks to calibrate and make sure that they're measuring exactly what they're supposed to be measuring. If you don't have a good set of accurate gauge blocks or using somebody that does, you have no way to actually say that you're measuring what you're supposed to be measuring. So there are a couple things to consider when you're using gauge blocks. One is the temperature in which you're using them. The accuracy of these gauge blocks right here is determined at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you're in an environment that is a little hotter or a little colder, the size of these gauge blocks will change. Now, they won't necessarily change a lot. We're talking millionths of an inch. But again, you need to be aware of the situation and what you're using these gauge blocks for when you do so. Now, if you happen to drop your gauge blocks and you do get a dent in that base right there, don't go immediately throwing away your gauge blocks. What you can do is you can get an abrasive stone. Mitsutoyo makes what they call a Sarah stone. And you can knock down those high spots and bring that gauge block into working order. So now, let's go ahead and show you how you ring the blocks together. Basically, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be making a stack or we're going to combine two gauge blocks. You can do more. We're going to show you two that make a single measurement out of multiple blocks. And for that, we need our gloves. So step one, before we ring these gauge blocks together, we have two surfaces that are going to be joined. We want to make sure those are nice and clean. We're going to take some alcohol and some lint-free cloths and make sure that we have a nice clean surface in which those blocks can really join together nice and secure.
The second step is to make sure that we apply a very thin layer of oil to the gauge blocks in order that they ring correctly. Now what we have here, this I actually learned from Mitutoyo, is an ink pad that we have soaked with oil. Works really, really well. So I'm going to go ahead and dab the surface that I'm going to ring together. You can see the oil on it right there. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that surface off now so that we have the thinnest layer of oil possible. And you're never going to entirely wipe off all the oil without some sort of solvent, so there's going to be a very thin layer left. I'll do that with the second block. Now, although I'm using square gauge blocks here, I want to go ahead and note that you can obviously do this with the rectangular gauge blocks. You can do it with the ceramic gauge blocks. In fact, you can do it with a combination. I can go ahead and ring a steel block to a ceramic block. So long as the surfaces that you are ringing together are extremely flat, you won't have any problems. Now, in order to do this, you're going to have to generate some force when we put these gauge blocks together. The rectangular gauge blocks, you'll slide one on top of the other. With the square, we're going to use a twisting method. Now, and if you've done this correctly, they will stick together. So, a little bit nervous, right? Kind of wondering whether you did it right, but as you can see, they're stuck together, all right? Now, the reason these stick together is a somewhat debated topic, right? There's a couple different theories out there, but to be honest with you, nobody's exactly sure why they stick together. I encourage you, if you're interested, go ahead and do a Google search. You'll get a couple different opinions on how it works. All we know is that it does work. Now, if done correctly, the distance between those two blocks right there should be somewhere around a millionth of an inch, right? So it really allows you to take these gauge blocks and create extremely accurate stacks. Now, another phenomenon with ringing gauge blocks is the longer they stay rung together, the tighter that connection becomes. So we do recommend when you're done, you go ahead and break them apart. Now, although the force is pretty strong when you're pulling directly apart, if you just kind of twist them, you can usually pop them off. Just be careful not to damage the faces. And also, if you have a steel set, go ahead and apply a little bit of rust preventative oil to increase their longevity. So with that, that pretty much wraps up our quick demonstration on gauge blocks, what they are, where they came from, how you use them. Again, we have the square set. We have this set right here. These are all Mitutoyo gauge blocks. This set right here has been with us probably since the shop opened. Very old, still a nice quality set, still doing what it's meant to do. So again, I'm Travis with Titans of CNC. We thank you for joining us. We hope to see you guys in future videos where we demonstrate the importance and the nature of quality in a manufacturing environment. We'll see you then.